Hey guys and welcome to RC and Legos and today I will be showing you how to replace a motor in one of these Axial SCX24s. It seems like it is a common problem for the motor to go out in these trucks so we are going to be switching to a different motor see if it lasts longer let's get started. So here you can see the motor I got this from Hobby Plus and you can see it is a retail from Hobbytown USA. Here is the motor. It's just a small little thing. And it is called a 030 micro motor. So that is the motor that is supposed to just bolt right into the truck. You need a small Allen key, and then the Allen key that came with the truck. You need the smallest flathead screwdriver you have, and a new motor, of course, and possibly a pinion, because I totally destroyed mine trying to get it off the motor. Make sure you have a magnetic bowl. That really ha helps to keep track of your parts since these screws are really tiny. Let's see you guys now. If you don't have a container to keep all your screws and stuff, the body works pretty well as one. So those are the tools that you will be needing. So first things first, to make it easier on ourselves, let's take the body off of the truck. And right here, there are two screws, one on each side, holding the body onto the frame. All right, little nubs here that you kind of have to open up the frame a little bit to get out. And that those really help in holding it in while you get the screws in. So now that you have the body off, here is the truck. I would suggest taking the tires off too, that just makes it easier and it's not that hard. Alright, so next step is we want to get the transmission out of the truck. But first let's remove the battery tray and take out these four screws, two on each side, holding it in. All right, with all the screws removed, you just pop this out. It is a mini C-channel frame, as you can see. So there is a groove in there. So next thing that I want to get out of my way is probably the drive shafts. You can see here, there is a screw there and a screw there. All you have to do is Turn the drive shaft to get them in the right spot. So right there is good. And then we'll just take those out and then these will come out of the way. Alright, with the screws removed, you should just be able to slide right off. There we go, little pop. Now let's get the front one off. There we go. Now you can see the drive shafts are hanging down. At least the front one is. So now, let's unplug the motor. Just like that. And then let's remove the two bottom screws holding the transmission and motor on. All right, there we go. The screws are out. Looks like there is one right there. So take note of that one. 
All right, that is out. And there is the transmission. Make sure you get that screw out so you don't lose it. And there it is, guys. You can see the gear is exposed here. And the other part of the skid plate has the other like half of this. So next we need to take off the cover. There is a screw here. A screw there. Hopefully that's all the screws. But let's take them out. So there we go, that cover just comes off. And then that exposes the gear on the motor. And then the spur gear. So, should just have to remove these two screws. And then put this gear on the other motor. And then bolt everything back together. It looks like the motor screws are the one step bigger. So you will need these. Yep. That is the correct size. And they are shorter. Alright, and there's the motor. And it's not like the motor is locked up or anything. It spins just fine, but it just doesn't do anything. Alright, so now we need to take the gear off of the old motor and put it on the new one. So I will use my small flathead screwdriver and just pry it off. Alright guys, so when I was trying to get the pinion gear off of the motor, I couldn't get the screwdriver under it. So I used a needle nose pliers and totally demolished it. So if you can't get the gear off, then you'd probably want one of these along with your motor. But you can't get them right now during the time of filming this video because everything is back ordered. Probably because everybody else has ruined theirs. And trying to get them off so I am going to look through my stash of things and see if I have anything like this and if I don't I guess I'll be waiting for a while all right guys so it has been a couple of months and well the motors are back in stock and the gears are so I can go ahead and order those but I will be anyways, but not for the other truck here that we are working on. So recently the motor went out on my truck. So we're going to take the motor out, get the pinion off of it, put on the new motor, and put together the truck. So let's get to it. <laughs> All right, guys, got the motor out. And now, this is how you're supposed to take it off. Because you see there's a little bit of space under it. So you just get your screwdriver right under it. Oh, like that. Push it in and pry up. See it's starting to come off. Almost there. Don't lose it. Boom. There you go. An undestroyed gear. And you can take your new motor. Push it on. It is a little bit tough. There we go. Now make sure you don't push it on too far. Alright, and I'm going to take my transmission and see if that's enough. 
Need to go down a little bit more. Just make sure you don't go too far. That looks pretty good. So let's take a transmission. Pop it in. That looks better. Still could go more, but I'm going to call it there and hopefully it works. I'm going to put it in like this, with this pointing towards the drive shaft. And then we just put everything back together and hopefully it works. So just so you guys know, to get the gear mesh right, you want just a little bit of play in it. See, so just a little bit. And that will make for a nice smooth run. Don't want it too tight where it doesn't have that little bit of movement. And you don't want it too loose where it has a lot. Just that little tiny bit there. guys well I ran into a slight problem you can see here the wires are too short I guess we're gonna have to desolder these wires and then solder them onto the new motor because that just doesn't work it might work if you have the motor going the other way because as you can see the red wire is all the way up here and the it's also all the way down there so that's the longest run so maybe if you turn the motor over, it would work. But I'm just going to desolder the wires and solder on the longer ones from the old motor. All right, I did a quick wire swap. So now i got the longer wire on it. See what it looks like if you want to. All right, but now I can get back to putting the battery tray on. There we go. See, now that works. All right, let's bolt this up and then we will be close to done. Just have to put the tires on.
All right, guys, there it is. We got the custom tires on it. But does it work? So let's fire it up and see. All right, guys, it is on. Let's see if it works. It does, but it's going backwards. See, forwards, and it's going backwards. So I will have to resolder the wires. But let's see how much, let's see if this thing, what this motor is capable of. Wow, that's a lot faster, guys, than the stock motor. Now, I'm guessing it's a lower turn, because the stock motor is an 88 turn. I'm guessing it has less turns, but let's see torque. Oh yeah, plenty of torque, though. Woo! Torquey motor. All right, well, there you have it, guys. Maybe an upgrade? Who knows? See how long this motor lasts. And if it lasts for a good while, then maybe we'll get one for the other truck. Let's see you guys know if you don't have a container to keep all your screws and stuff, the body works pretty well as one. Just a little tip.